Hello, my name is Mr. Dector, and I will be bringing your social studies third grade lesson today. Today, we will be having an Act It Out activity. In this Act It Out activity, you will have the chance to cast your ballot on a couple different items. These items will be one, the playground, whether you choose park or pool. And we've also included some of the local community um, measures that will be voted on in this November. So when you go to vote, you'll stand in a line to vote. When it is your turn in line, you'll enter an empty voting booth and mark your ballot. When you leave the booth, you will put your ballot in the ballot box. For our ballot, I have created a Kahoot for you to place your votes. I'm gonna go over each question so you can be a knowledgeable voter. I will do my best to tell everything in a non-biased way so you can be knowledgeable on the topics. The first question, and if you notice, I marked that both answers are possible. So as a citizen, there is no right or wrong answer when you vote, it is your opinion and everyone's opinions as citizens of the United States all matter. So question one, should the city use funds or money to create a playground or a pool? So that is our big topic of discussion for the last couple of weeks, and you will cast your vote whether you would like a pool at the city or a playground. The next question is, what, sorry, who should be the president of the United States of America? I've picked the top four candidates. That would be the Republican Party, Donald Trump, the Democratic Party, Joe Biden, the Green Party, Howie Hawkins, and the Libertarian Party, Joe Jurgensen. I wanted to go over some of the topics so you can make a smart vote on which president that you would like to be our next one. I'll start with the Republican candidate, Donald Trump, who is our current president. So some of the key issues that Donald Trump is for is he wants to bring back the pandemic from its current bad economy. So the economy or business has taken a hit with our current corona pandemic, and he wants to bring jobs and money back. He would like to end the reliance on China and protect USA manufacturing. I'm sure all of you have seen Made in China on something as a product, and he would like the products to be made, if possible, in the United States. As foreign policy, he views America first. He is for building a wall on our southern border and um, stopping some immigration measures. On health, he wants to lower drug costs for um, prescription drugs for people that need them and he would like to terminate or stop the Affordable Care Act and start a new um, medical act himself. And on climate change, he is trying to promote U.S. energy. The next candidate, our Democratic candidate, is Joe Biden. Joe Biden's key issue on coronavirus, he believes there should be a national test and we should be able to trace the coronavirus and have more tracing to try to stop the disease. Sorry, the virus. In jobs and money, he wants to raise the minimum wage. The minimum wage is what people get at minimum paid for their job per hour, and he would like to raise that rate. And he'd like to invest in green energy. That would be solar panels, that would be wind turbines, etc. He would like um, some criminal justice reform. That means changing what's currently going on possibly in our jail system and with our police force. And he wants to make sure that minority communities, that would be some of our smaller minorities, have grants to help them with education and such. And in climate, he would like to rejoin the global climate accord. So we have um, gotten out of the um, Paris Treaty, and he'd like to join that again. The next candidate for the Green Party was, um, 
sorry, Howie Hawkinson's. And Howie Hawkinson's would like one Medicare and um, health care for all. On the Green New Deal, he would like more ownership in energy and manufacturing and transportation. And he really wants to have zero to no carbon emissions by 2030. So the Green Party really wants to focus on clean energy. On peace policies, they want to get rid of nuclear weapons if possible. They want to stop any wars that are not or bring back U.S. troops and stop any wars that we are currently in. And they'd like to try to bring down our military force by about 75 percent. And in economics, they want to have a job guarantee for all. They would like to increase the minimum wage to $20. Let's take a look at the next candidate, Joe Jorgensen. And Joe Jorgensen has a couple um, things I'd like to share. And these are actual quotes that she has made. So on COVID-19, we must reduce red tape and regulation so that medicine and treatment, as well as testing, can get to patients at all time. On healthcare, we can reduce the cost of health care by 75% by allowing real price competition. So she wants to try to get rid of monopoly companies or companies that rule other companies. In the environment, I will work to remove government barriers replacing coal and oil power plants. So she wants to get rid of coal and oil power plants and move to more green energy. And in education, as president, I will work to return control of education to where it belongs, parents, teachers, and students. All right, let's move to the next question. So the next questions or set of questions are all prep, sorry, propositions. These propositions are propositions that people in California will vote on. And I'll give you a brief description on each one. And remember, this is your decision and it's okay for all of us to have a different opinion. Prep, sorry, I keep on saying preposition. Proposition 14 is to continue giving money to stem cell research. And this is $5.5 billion for research and development in stem cells. So if you don't know what stem cells are, we, our body is made of lots of different cells. Stem cells are the cells that haven't determined whether they're going to be a muscle cell, a connective tissue cell, or which cell. And we can research and spend a lot of time in science to learn about these cells to possibly help people in the med to help humans in the medical field in lots of different areas. So stem cell research has been really, really popular recently in science. Proposition 15. So it increases funding sources for public schools and community surface services by changing taxes of commercial property. So this is giving more money to schools and communities. And the money would be coming from um, bigger businesses. So it would be changing around their taxes or how much they pay each year and then giving that money they collect from taxes from certain corporations and companies and businesses and giving that money back to schools and communities. Our next proposition is Proposition 17. And this restores the right to vote after completion of prison term. So if someone does get caught um, for doing something wrong in our nation, they possibly might serve a prison time. Some offenses, for example, felonies, take away the person or the citizen's right to vote. So this proposition says if a prisoner has completed their time in prison, it gives them back the chance to vote, which currently they are not allowed to vote. And that is a yes or no. All right, Proposition 18. 
Should 17 year olds be able to vote in primary elections if they are 18 by the general election? So that is changing normally. If you are not 18, you are not allowed to vote. But this would be changing it that if you are 18 by the time of the general election on November 2nd or November 3rd, then you can vote in the primary elections. Primary elections kind of give, it narrows the candidates for who might be running for president and it checks in some other matters. The next proposition is Proposition 24. And that allows consumers to prevent businesses from sharing personal information by creating a privacy agency. So this would be adding a whole new agency to California. And the whole agency or the whole business's goal would be to prevent certain privacy being spread from people who buy things. So keeping people's personal information safe. And that's why I went with the locks. All right, the next questions, I'm not going to show the answers because these questions do have a right or wrong answer. So questions eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 do have a right or wrong answer. And, but remember questions one through seven are just checking your opinion. How would you vote on those matters? All right, I wanna show one more slide real quick. Sorry about that, it was hard to click on it while sharing my screen. Okay, so after you have done your voting, I wanna check, how did it feel to vote on these issues? How did you vote and why? So how did you make your decisions on each one? Did any of you vote for the project? For example, maybe you were going for pool at first and you changed to playground. And why did you change your mind? How do you think voting helps people have a voice in their community? And I want you to be ready to be share to share out some of these um, questions in class when we talk about this again. I would just like to say thank you for voting and I hope you enjoyed this activity. Bye everyone.